Today we're taking a look at the Widgie Dash for gamers and streamers and content creators. Thanks to G-Skill for sending one of these over for us to take a look at. The Widgie Dash is a really powerful mini dashboard or kind of like a control center for your PC. It slots in somewhere between those super slick PC stats displays that connect to your PC by HDMI and like a real Elgato stream deck with a whole bunch of buttons that launch applications and do stuff. Depending on how you configure this device, you can set up that touchscreen to either launch actual applications or kind of run functions or macros that you'll set up in the software or actually just monitor different aspects of your system all on this external display. You can configure a grid of buttons or monitors and set the colors, set the positions, and all sorts of interesting stuff in the software. This is super handy if you find yourself launching a bunch of stuff while you're in-game or if you're streaming and you don't want to have to worry about complex keyboard shortcuts or it just works out better for you to just tap a button on a display that's kind of sitting on your desk in front of your keyboard or just off to the side for example. Like I said this is a super powerful device. You can really kind of configure anything inside of the Widgie Dash software in order to kind of bind to the button functions. I found using the G-Skill software to be relatively easy. It did take a little bit to get used to but once I kind of figured out you know what I wanted to see on the screen and what my options were, I was kind of off to the races. Everything pretty much just worked in terms of the software. No fuss in order to get everything set up, and I was pleasantly surprised by that. I was able to set the color, the brightness, the screen timeout, all that stuff. It basically instantly updates on the Widgie Dash, and I really just didn't have any hiccups. In terms of the screen here, we have a nice and crisp, adjustable 7-inch display. Like I said, you can definitely set the brightness, and all of the colors, that's all easily done in the software. For me, I had to go with this classic green color. As for how I wanted to position this device, it does have a leg that kind of free floats, and it'll rest on your desk. Since the cable is on the left side when you're looking at the screen, I would probably try to either hide it, set it up on the right-hand side, or the left-hand side if I didn't already have some stuff there, but the right-hand side is probably where it's going on my desk. By default, we have a nice selection of some potentially handy stuff here. Some music controls, we've got some sensor stats from Hardware Info, which is super cool. We've got a time clock, a weather widget, and some other stuff. Definitely interesting, and a nice way to start off using this device. In my case, I really wanted to monitor the system stats, so that's what I went with in general. This device has support for Hardware Info 64, as well as Ada 64, which is really just kind of awesome. As a PC gamer, I really want to see those stats, and it's super handy to have that on this touchscreen, and available without having to worry about MSI, Afterburner, and Riva Tuner being up on screen. I found this to be a really handy little companion for my gaming PC, because I was able to see some stuff that I wouldn't typically track in MSI, Afterburner, or Riva Tuner, for example, and I was able to get some use out of some of those function buttons while I was in-game or just a full screen app for example. I definitely think that once you have this screen set up and configured, you know, just the way you want it, this is definitely going to be a handy little companion that is absolutely worth the desk space that it takes up. I definitely also think this is a really nice device to kind of show off your system, especially if you are a content creator or if you just go to LAN parties, for example. People will definitely take a second look at this display. I don't really do a whole lot of live streams really anywhere, but this device definitely can help with that. I know that they have some kind of Twitch chat integration, which is very cool, but you can also configure some of those buttons to launch applications like OBS or launch some kind of custom script. Like I said, it's super open. You can kind of launch anything and almost build like a macro to do it. You can configure and set up a couple of different screens, and then you can just kind of swipe back and forth. When you configure this stuff in the software, it pretty much updates the Widgie Dash instantly, which is super nice. You'll be able to see pretty much what your setup looks like in real time. It'll probably take you a little bit to kind of get used to how to set this up in the G-Skill software, but in general, I would say the process is relatively easy to pick up and understand. I'll definitely say you're going to spend quite a bit of time in here. I would imagine it'll probably take you about an hour or two to configure all the different screens that you want and get everything. Or when I'm in full screen gaming with a controller, there's definitely some games where I don't really want that MSI afterburner overlay, so it's super handy to have this screen available with just a double tap at a second's notice. So yeah, definitely an interesting device. 
and definitely a nice way to finish off an already built setup and just optimize your overall workflow. Right now this device is selling for about 130 bucks on the usual retailers, which I think is pretty fair considering all the stuff that you can do with this. If you want to leverage that A to 64 integration, you are going to have to buy a license for that. I think it's probably worth it if you're going to get a lot of long-term use out of this, so definitely something to consider. If you're interested in picking up one of the widget dashes, I'll have a link in the description below, as well as the system parts list for this gaming build. So head down there and check it out. If you're into gaming PC and home lab videos, get subscribed to the channel and take a look around. There's quite a bit of content. Until next time, keep on gaming.